Today, I'm going to show you how to turn your spore print into a liquid syringe using our liquid culture spore syringe kit. In the kit, we have five sterile liquid syringes. The biggest problem you'll run into is bacterial contamination. Bacteria spores are smaller than fungal spores, so when they stick to fungal spores, they can hide and create issues for us down the line. To combat this, these have antibacterial sterile water in it, which will hydrate the bacterial spores, penetrating the cell wall and deactivating the bacteria. We have five sterile syringes, 10 sterile needles, a sterile container. It's important that you don't open this until you're ready to use it in a clean environment. This is also a single use container. It can't be reused. 70% isopropyl alcohol and five MEA biodegradable agar cups. In addition, you're going to need a scalpel or you can use any metal knife. Keep in mind, you'll still have to flame sterilize it. If your knife or scalpel has any black residue left over from previous sterilizing, don't worry, you won't have any issues with this as long as you sterilize it properly. A lighter. It's important to use a lighter that's pointing away from us because we're using isopropyl alcohol. A spore print. It's also always good to wear a mask while we're doing this. A pair of gloves. And then I'm going to show you how to inoculate it into a grain bag when we're finished. Isopropyl alcohol will strip your marker, so I recommend copying over your label onto a piece of tape so that we can mitigate this. Then in the future, when you use your spore print again, you still have your label. For practical reasons around filming, I'm using water instead of isopropyl alcohol, so I'm going to leave it as it is. We're going to sanitize our hands, spray a paper towel, give the surface a generous spray, it's important that we leave the alcohol to rest for at least a minute on whatever surface we're spraying to give it time to kill any contamination. Pushing the dirt to the bottom, we're going to wipe top to bottom, covering all of our workspace, and then wipe the bottom so we get rid of all debris. To reduce the chance of contamination, it's important that you do this either in front of a laminar flow hood or inside of a still air box. Spray our spore print and give it a wipe. Spray our lighter, give it a wipe. Spray our container, and give it a wipe, spray our syringes, and give them a wipe too. We're going to give our scalpel a spray and a wipe, and the same with the small container. Then we're going to fill it with isopropyl alcohol so we can sanitize our syringe caps. Ensure that all steps are done quickly, especially when your sterile container is open. Doing every step with as little movement as possible, making sure that we can keep the air in the room that we're working in as still as we can. We're going to half undo the cap of the syringe, open the container most of the way, drop the cap into the alcohol bath to minimize contamination, open the lid, and then drain the syringe into the container. Close the lid halfway, and then we're going to do the same thing with the other four syringes. Some of the caps can be difficult to open. If you run into this issue, you can use a paper towel soaked in isopropyl alcohol to assist you in loosening it. Now we're going to open up our spore print. We're going to flame sterilize our scalpel, making sure that it turns red hot and then letting it cool down. Open up the container and scrape the spores into the liquid using the blunt side of the scalpel, being careful not to put a hole in the foil, ensuring that we can use the spore print again in the future. If you are worried about this, you can tap the back side of the foil, which will put enough spores into the liquid. We're going to scrape it and tap the back of the foil to ensure that it all falls in. And this is what it looks like. It's also important that we always put the back side of the lid facing down, making sure the other side doesn't touch our workspace, reducing the chance of contamination. We're going to close the container, fold the foil, and put it back into the Ziploc bag so we can use it again later. Give the container a good shake so the spores are well distributed in the liquid. Then we're gonna spray our hands again and give our workspace another spray and wipe. Then we're going to spray five of the needles. Give them a wipe. The other five needles are for inoculating grain when we're finished. Give the sterilized syringes a spray and a wipe, and then spray and wipe our MEA cups. Grab one of the syringes and a needle, open them, and put the needle on the syringe. Then we're going to do the same thing for the other four syringes.
Move the spore container to the middle of the workspace and open it up, putting the back of the lid facing down. Grab one of the syringes and take the cap off the needle and pull it up into the syringe at the 10 mil mark. Put the lid back on the needle as it's very sharp and we don't want anyone to get hurt. And do the same thing with the other four syringes. The reason why we're using a needle is so that we reduce the chance of touching the edges of the container, minimizing our chance of contamination. For the last syringe, we're going to have to pick up the container and tilt it so we can get the rest of the liquid. Move the container out of the way and put the syringes at the top of our workspace. Before we use them, we want to test them for any contamination. Take the cup off, open up one of the MEA cups and put one drop on it. Any more and it could be too wet. Close the cup, put the lid on the needle and the syringe in front of the MEA cup that we use for testing and do the same with the other four syringes. It's time to put the caps on the syringes. Grab one of the caps from the isopropyl alcohol bath. Grab one of the syringes, take the needle off the syringe and put the cap on as quick as you can. And do the same for the other four syringes. Now we need to label them so we know which MEA plate was used to test each syringe. And now we have five liquid spore syringes. We want to monitor this over five days to make sure that no contamination grows. Keeping in mind that most contamination starts off white before changing color. If there is any contamination, we will have to throw that syringe out. However, we can clean it up in the MEA cup, which we'll cover in another skill video. Leaving the spores for over 48 hours also gives us a chance to rehydrate spores that are over five years old, improving their germination rate and speed. You can store these for 6 to 12 months away from light and heat. It's best to store them in a Ziploc bag in the vegetable compartment of your fridge. Remember to label each syringe with the species and the date. When we find they're all clear for contamination, we can grab one and inoculate some grain. Make sure not to buy any grain bags from Root Lab until you find out if the syringes are contamination free. Half undo the cap, open the needle, take the cap off and put the needle on as quick as you can. Give it a shake so that all the spores are distributed evenly in the liquid. Spray and wipe the injection port. Take the cap off the needle, put it into the injection port and inject all of the liquid into the grain. Put the cap back on and give the grain a gentle massage. Flip it over and massage it some more, making sure the liquid doesn't pull onto the bottom. We'll learn all about this and everything you need to know about inoculating grain in another skill video. Spores are slower than liquid culture and can take up to two weeks to germinate. When working with needles, be careful not to pierce yourself or others. When discarding the needle, make sure the cap is tightly placed on it and secure. It's recommended to throw away the sharp object carefully so the person emptying the bin doesn't get pierced by the needle. Now you have another four liquid spore syringes you can use whenever you want.